Press 1 if you want a new rook view. Smash and Splash 5 was a tournament with a lot of controversy attached to it. A lot of this was because many of the staff from the tournament broke away from SNS in general due to issues with management later after the tournament ended, but a lot of the controversy came from the tournament itself, and specifically, how the Waterfall Swiss idea played out in real time. I'm not sure who was responsible for the format at the end of the day, but regardless of the answer, I think it's important to bring up why this tournament was never going to fully work, even if the weekend went as smoothly as possible. Most major Smash tournaments typically run over the course of a single weekend, using a bracket pools format to efficiently run a large tournament in a reasonable amount of time. This has proven to be a working formula, but it doesn't come without its own issues. The big one is that this format is not friendly to weaker players, and when many people come from all across the country to attend these tournaments, going 0-2 and, and being eliminated doesn't exactly sound appealing, and roughly 25% of all players will be eliminated after only two sets, so it's a significant group of players. You could argue that o 2 ers the people who just lose twice at tournaments and get eliminated, are some of the most important people in the Smash community. At the very least, they are crucial to the success of competitive Smash as a concept. It's important for these players to be engaged and to feel welcome and wanted at tournaments. Enter Smash and Splash 5, the super major that wanted to fix this problem. It proposed a format called Waterfall Swiss that looked amazing on paper. I originally saw the format posted on Twitter and watched their video, and was incredibly stoked that they were trying something like this. A lot of my personal friends were going up to Wisconsin, so I was excited to see how it would go. And as someone outside of staff positions in the Smash community, I always assumed that Smash majors were likely immune to mishaps like this tournament format actually was. I figured it would work out because a team of professional event organizers had to sign off on this. I was clearly wrong. It's kind of amazing to me that this was even attempted and that not many questions came up about the flaws before the tournament started. It's not that the idea was bad, and it is possible that something similar could work and be achieved. So I'm not here to tell everyone that double elimination should be the only legal super major format to begin with. Matter of fact, the reason why I'm posting this is because I thought that this tournament idea had potential, and as someone who is involved in a rapidly growing Mario Kart 8 scene, I'm constantly thinking about ideas for tournament formats, and this one was one that piqued my interest. Initially, I thought that Smash and Splash just did something wrong and that we could probably do a better job. There were groups that had people playing uneven amounts of matches for starters, and there was a group where two players managed to go both 6-0 despite being in a Swiss group of less than 64 entrants, so this should not have been possible. The obvious mistake that impacted every group was one we would run into later. Swiss pools where the group size could not be defined as 2 to the power of x. And when you have 50 people in a Swiss group, you're never going to have a fair tournament because of this. I'll get into the details later, but when I saw this in my evaluations, it confirmed to me that the organizers were just lazy on working out the details on how these groups would actually play out. But after further evaluation and toying with the group numbers, a realization hit me that the format the staff wanted to run was never going to work to begin with. Even if you had clean Swiss groups of 16, 32, 64, etc. This is honestly a really weird phenomena, but it's because you can't really rig groups and bracket sizes to meet your needs in the most perfect way possible. There's not really a perfect solution here, so let's get into why. Before I talk about the more hidden mistake, I need to talk about the more obvious one first to set the stage. So let's get into why you shouldn't ever really run Swiss pools if your group numbers aren't a power of two. So to show why two to the X is the ideal number, Let's just use an example of what happens in a Swiss pool of 32 or 2 to the 5. So, you take a look, you got your example Swiss pool, 32 entrants. After round 1, 16 people win, 16 people lose. The 16 people now all play each other, 8 of them will win, etc. 8 will lose, but 8 of the people who lost their first game will also win and become part of this group. So, what you want to notice here is that after each round, you're going to have an even number. So, what this means is because there's an even number, there will always be an opponent that will have the same record as you to play. So when you're done at, with the final, you have the following distribution here. So when you get to one champion at the end, it doesn't matter that it's odd now because the tournament's finished. 
but until this point, you always need to have even numbers, or else you're going to have matches where people don't have the same record. So in summary, it's good to have Swiss pools with two to the X players, because then every round somebody will play somebody with the same record as them. And this is something that will only happen with group sizes that are a power of two. This means that nobody will be unfairly treated by the format itself, and if they have to play the top seed of their pool after losing, it's because the top seed also lost. I'll get into some examples of the format itself screwing over players later, but before that I want to talk about the tournament itself a bit more. As mentioned, one of the flaws of the tournament was that they did not stick to a power of two number for group size, and I believe I understand exactly why this choice was made. It's because the staff prioritized a clean bracket phase of the tournament, and the sacrifice was the Swiss format, whether it was intentional or not. They pretty much started from the ending and worked their way to the beginning. And it was important to SNS staff that there were 32 Swiss pools, because it meant that the winners of the pools would be the ones who got floated to the winner side of the final top 64. Unfortunately, what should have been a priority was having 32 people in the groups instead, or 64. But because the priority was an attractive final bracket, you needed 50 players in each of the pools because there were 1,600 total. The crazy thing about this, though, is when I thought of fixes, I realized that changing the group sizes alone wasn't enough to save this tournament. So let's take a look at what exactly happened at SNS5, starting from the Division 1 perspective. So this is essentially the SNS format right here. 416 players made it out of pools, and 256 were placed in Division 3, 128 were placed in Division 2, and 32 were placed in Division 1. What you have in Division 3 is a winner's bracket that takes people who finish from 6th to 13th, and there's 256 players. 128 players advanced to Division 2, where they start in losers. The people who got 2nd to 5th place in the Swiss phase are starting the winner's bracket. And it goes on again, and eventually you get 32 people here, and you have 32 people in the loser's bracket that come from Division 2, and you have your final top 64 here. As I mentioned, I believe these brackets were a very intentional choice by the staff. The numbers are very satisfying to look at when thinking about brackets. You know, you have your 256s, 128s, 64s, 32s, you know, good numbers for tournaments. So it looks good, but it was more of a, it looks this way because of a sacrifice that had to be made. And unfortunately, when a sacrifice is the part of the event that 75% of the people who enter your tournament only get a play, it ruins the tournament for the masses. So once this format was decided upon, this is why Smash and Splash 5 was doomed to fail before the tournament even started. So let's take a look at the choices that had to be made from here on out, given that this was a decision that they made. To keep clean divisions in the following format, we have the following goals. So Division 1, you take X people. Division 2, you take 4 times that. And Division 3, you take 8 times that. And in this case, we have X, which is the number of Swiss pools, so that's 32 here. So you get 13 X people making it into the group, so you have 416 total. If we went with X equals 64, it all still works out with nice numbers, you just have 832 instead. Now the 13 here should look familiar, and that's because that's the number of people who advance from each pool. As you can see, it's 6 to 13th place. This 13 is actually really significant, though. It was chosen by the staff because it was a number that was the most convenient to set up brackets that simply looked right, regardless of whether or not it was actually optimal. So why is this number 13 associated with a format that I'm claiming is doomed to fail? Well, we'll get to that, but first I need to take a brief intermission to talk about math because, you know, I actually like math. Now, there are many things that you learn about in school that you sit back and think, why would I ever need to understand how this works? And I'm going to bring one of those cases up. So some of you may recognize this triangle. It's called Pascal's Triangle. The number in the previous rows helped calculate the ones in the next. It's pretty neat. And today we have a real world use for this thing. You might have noticed that our final Swiss records in the groups of 32 earlier surprisingly line up with one of the rows in the triangle exactly. And this is very intentional. As mentioned earlier, 2 to the 5th is 32. It's no coincidence that the row of the 5 next to the 1 is an exact match with the records you will get out of a 32 person Swiss pool. And this will stay true for any pure Swiss format that has no incomplete matches. If your pools are only 16 people, then you'll have one 4 no player, 4 3 and 1s, 6 2 and 2s, etc. To me, it's pretty obvious that this should be how you want to construct your divisions in general for a waterfall Swiss format. Maybe a 5 and 0 player goes to Division 1, 4 and 1 players go to D2, 
three and two players go to D3 without any question whatsoever. And this should obviously be ideal. If you want this to happen, you need to pay attention to Pascal's triangle. For every row, the first column represents the team with the best record. Since Swiss tournaments are designed to have a single winner, it makes sense that there will always be one undefeated player. The second column represents the amount of players per group losing one set, and the third column represents the amount of players per group losing two sets, and so on. Since we're thinking in terms of three divisions, the three leftmost numbers of each row is all that should really matter to us. If you sum these three numbers, you will get a number that belongs to a list of numbers that we can consider to be a viable amount of advancing players per Swiss group. This starts with the number 4, or 1 plus 2 plus 1, but this would be a trivial example. This is because this represents the Swiss group of 4 teams, and it would be advancing 4 out of 4 teams, rendering a group phase useless. The next row you have 1 plus 3 plus 3, but I think that having a group phase that advances 7 of 8 players is also pushing things a little bit. Things start to get normal when you consider the Swiss group of at least 16 players. You can actually justify taking 11 of 16 to a new phase, or 1 plus 4 plus 6. The next viable number is 16, which would be 1 plus 5 plus 10, followed by 22, 29, 37, 46, 56, etc. If you keep going past 56 though, you're going to be having some absolutely massive groups that aren't really viable to begin with. So the amount of viable numbers is pretty limited, but such is life when running Swiss groups really in any kind of event. The important thing to note here is that 13 is not included in this list. And this is a big reason why SNS was never going to work the second the brackets were set up in the manner they were. They shouldn't have been the priority if the goal was to have a fair tournament for everyone. And even if they chose a good group size, a similarly structured bracket phase would have still caused less than ideal cutoff criteria for groups. At the tournament, there were multiple 4 and 2 people that advanced, and multiple 4 and 2 people that didn't advance. You can technically say that Swiss takes this into account, and certain 4 and 2 players deserve it more than others for playing a harder schedule, but I don't think it's really satisfactory to tell a player this. This would personally annoy me if I was someone on the outside because I would feel like I'd be eliminated in the last round due to not having it a harder opponent. And at the end of the day, this circumstance is, is completely avoidable. So in summary, there's two major fixes that need to happen to SNS's format. One, they need to use a group number 2 to the X. X can be anything, but if you use a too big of a number, then you don't really have a realistic tournament. Number two, they need to advance a number from the set 7, 11, 16, 22, you know, etc. We mentioned it earlier. This is something that we can call the Pascal number set, I guess, just to shorten it for later usage. And the Pascal number set actually implies that 2 to the X players per group is used to begin with, so technically, the second fix is really the only fix that's needed. It's just worth noting that 2 to the X alone was not enough, like I initially thought it would be. Before suggesting a solution, I finally want to show some actual examples of how both of these things negatively impacted the tournament. To start, with 50 person groups you get the following dilemma automatically. After one round, you're going to have an odd amount of players with a winning and losing record. So in this case, 25 and 25. So what this means is you're going to have 12 1-0 versus 1-0 matches, 12 0-1 versus 0-1 matches, but one match that's 1-0 versus 0-1, and, and this one match will ruin everything. After the second round, you're now going to have either 12 2-0 teams, 12 0-2 teams, and 26 1-1 and teams, or 13 2-0, 13 0-2, and, and 24 1-1 and teams. So what this means is you cannot accurately set up an ideal number of players to advance to divisional play. So both of our rules are already broken here. So now I want to actually take a look at one of the groups and how breaking these laws that we've established happened in the tournament and made it worse for everybody. So starting from group A1, the first group of the tournament, we can see the effects already. Now because 50 is greater than our 32 person groups, you need to play six matches to determine the winner of a pool. That's why you see Tweak here has a 6-0 record, but he's the only person with a 6-0 record. Smash and Splash established that ranks 2 to 5 in a Swiss pool will go to Division 2, as we can see right here. Because there's more than 32 people in the group, there's 50, there should be at least 5 people who go 5 and 1. As you can see here, this player called Loaf went 5 and 1. What this means is that because we're not actually following Pascal advancement numbers, things are going to get a bit funky. Despite 4, 5, and 1 players going to Division 2, Loaf here went 5 and 1 and has to go to Division 3. So, 
let's take a look at how this player did. Now keep in mind that most people in Division 3 went 4-2, and two, but this isn't the case of this player, because they went 5-1. and one. So it's likely to say that they're probably better than everybody here. But unfortunately, because of how the Swiss phase turned out, they end up in Division 3. But no matter, because go 2-0, and 2-1, oh, and, and we're in Division 2. Now, what's unfortunate is, despite proving to be better than most people in Division 3 right now, they have to start in the loser's bracket instead of the winner's bracket. But regardless, after beating my buddy Q, another player right here, my Bowser friend Lunik, win, 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 we're in Division 1, top 64. Now, I believe they probably lose in top 64 because, you know, this is like the part of the tournament where it's like, okay, just like congratulations even making it here. Okay, we lose to blank. 49th is a good placement. What it means is that this player is probably very good and probably had no business getting six to begin with. And that can be evidenced by the fact that they went five and one. It just happened to be the Swiss tiebreaker rules that ended up putting them in Division 3 to begin with when they were a player, at the end of the day, capable of making Division 1. So, starting from literally the first group, we see somebody who goes 5-1, and one, goes in Division 3, and gets 49 overall. I think there were only 32 groups, so that would mean that they probably should have gotten second or third in this group. And I would imagine it's probable that many players like this one didn't deserve to be sent to Division 3, but it happened because of the formatting. And I didn't go through the entire tournament to check, but given A1 was the first possible group to monitor, it didn't take long to find a less than ideal outcome, and I think that's alarming. This is a solved situation if you can just have a setup that guarantees a player with one set loss goes to Division 2. Pool A3 is where I found the evidence that you truly need to have specific pool sizes. As someone from the Columbus Smash scene, I remembered hearing about this, when it happened because it impacted a top player from our region, but I never truly looked at it until now. At first glance, A3 actually looks better because it doesn't have the same problem as A1, where Loaf got sent to Division 3 with a 5-1 and one record. As you can see here, the first player that goes to Division 3 has a 4-2 and two record, so it looks better. But it's actually still pretty awful. Now Geist here, player from Columbus, he's one of our best players and was the two seed of this pool to reflect that. But Let's take a look at the schedule here. So, round one, win, round two, win, win, and then in round four, he has to play the, the three seed of the pool. It loses 0-2, and now we're 3-1, and one, wins the next game, we're 4-1. and one. Now, we all see what's about to happen here. You know, when you're, you're a two seed and you lose to a three seed, it's not too uncommon for this to happen. And it's okay because due to the nature of Swiss tournaments, he should still be fine to make it to Division 2 because he should get easier competition now that he lost. And as long as he beats the weaker competition, he'll still have one loss. Except that's not what happens here. Now, if you remember, we know that 50 person pools will not divide evenly into matches with people of identical records every time. Remember, we talked about the 25 and 25 example earlier and how that will have an effect on the rest of the tournament and you know you'll have one in match two that doesn't add up and that will stack so in round six geist loses to the one seed of his pool here void who had an undefeated record going into the last match now just because nobody else remaining was undefeated you know he had won the group already or he was the only undefeated player after five this is something that can happen when you have pool sizes like 50. geist ends up losing to the two best players in the pool, and he gets sent to Division 3 for it. Meanwhile, two players in this pool, you know, these two right here, uh, they ended up making it to Division 2 without having to play a single top 3 seed just because they lost early on. This wouldn't have been a problem in a tournament where guys just got to play someone with an equal record for him. Now, he moves on in bracket until he runs into Mr. R eventually and is knocked out. And this is a huge example of a player getting destroyed by the format of the tournament and considering the travel time and time investment that players really make to uh, attend tournaments like this, this is quite frankly unacceptable for tournament quality in my opinion, especially one of the level of a super major. See, Geist makes it to Division 2 relatively easily, I want to think. Win some games, 
wins some more games, and eventually gets to play Mr. R. You know, pretty well known to be a really good player. Evo Finals one year, I believe, so... Yeah, unfortunate bracket here for guys. You just can't have that. So, we finally get to the question. Is it possible to actually run a Waterfall Swiss tournament, or is it something that is just made up? And I think you can, but you have to be very careful with how you set up your brackets. In order to achieve fairness of everybody, you likely need to cut some players off once a certain number is reached, or even waitlist people. And it's up to the tournament organizers to decide if that's worth it in the end. I think it could be just the trade-off for an event that's more friendly to weaker players is not having a defined registration deadline, but rather a player cap. Anyway, here's an example that I came up with of an actual Waterfall Swiss bracket that is fair, and this should make it work. Now, there's a few things to notice here at first glance. It's more of a proof of concept, I guess. I'm starting with the smallest group number that you can really run a valid tournament for, which is 16 people in the pool. What this means is that you have 11 people advancing, or 1 plus 4 plus 6. This may sound like a lot, but I think we just need to get over the whole exclusiveness thing when talking about progressions here. I'm not saying all tournaments should progress more people to a second phase, but what I mean by this is that having over 60% of entrants progressing to a phase 2 isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just feels weird right now because it's abnormal. Keep in mind that SNS5 was likely made to provide tangible goals for players that would otherwise go 1 and 2 or 2 and 2. This continues with that theme in a sense. For those who want to brag about making it out of pools, you can now just brag that you make it to Division 2, and that can be the new impressive thing that's likely the equivalent in this tournament. What's more important though, is that the progression number agrees with the pool size. But if you want to be exclusive here, you could always just instead run two divisions and advance five players. So let's actually take a look at what we're dealing with here. You go to Division 3, we're going to start here. So you have 192 people in the winner's bracket. This is your Swiss 6 to 11th place. And 6 and 7 seeds will have a first round bye. Now the note here is that seeds get rewarded for having a tougher Swiss schedule by skipping round 1. Or the 6 and 7 seeds, my bad. But if they can't back it up in Division 3 winner's bracket, they go to losers round 1 with the 8 and 2 11 seeds that lot took losses as well. Then the top 4 from the Division 3 groups advance to Division 2. So now we have 8 groups of 24, again, a number similar to 12. Uh, 192 players, 128 that were placed here. So these numbers are different, 128 and 64. So the note here is that 16 start in winners per group and 8 start in losers. Division 2 placement teams will get the chance to move on in winners before starting in the losers bracket, and they're guaranteed 97th, unlike the people who had to come from the losers bracket. But they will have to play teams coming from Division 3, if they lose their first game in Division 2, but they will have the opportunity to move on winners. And from here, the top four advance to Division 1, and what you have is the exact same thing as SNS5. So this is a legitimate way that you can run Waterfall Swiss as a format if people are accepting of a weird bracket phase. The Division 2 and 3 brackets look more ugly than the actual SNS5, but in my opinion, this is a small price to pay for being able to run a fair tournament, and I believe that when developing this format, SNS staff just chose to look at Division 1 and work their way backwards. Because of this, the Division brackets did look somewhat pretty, but it was at a cost, and this is why I started by talking about Division 3 first and going to Division 1 at the end, because the tournament is built from the beginning stages, not the final one. Though Smash and Splash 6 wasn't going to be the same for multiple external reasons, the staff would announce after SNS 5 that they would abandon the format because they couldn't figure it out or something, but I think that's a bad solution. They just needed to look into why it didn't work and be confident in a fix. There's likely better ways out there to do brackets than the one in my example here, and I encourage you all to look for them, but I'm not certain how feasible they all will be. The question remains, however, is it possible to do Waterfall Swiss in a fair manner with brackets that also look good? A lot of the potential answer has to do with the advancement number itself. They chose 13 because it would create pretty brackets, as 13 can be described as 1 plus 4 plus 8. 4 and 8 are powers of 2, and 1 will also work with this as long as the total number of groups is a power of 2, because a power of 2 times 1, you know, is still the same thing. So, SNS chose to have 32 groups for this reason, so their Division 1 would have 32 players starting in the winner's side. As long as your number can be broken down in a similar way as 13, you probably can create brackets that will look like the ones in SNS. The problem is that if making a fair tournament is also your goal, you are incredibly limited in options. 
so limited that I think perfection is probably impossible. And if it is possible, it's most certainly not realistic for esports tournaments. The numbers simply just don't bend the way we want them to, which gives us no options for a truly fair tournament with great bracket structure. This is what really made Waterfall Swiss so fascinating to me, because I'm not sure if there's an ideal form for a Smash Super Major running the format. And I did look a little bit, and there may at least be one idea that is somewhat in the ballpark. So looking at the earlier sequence, one of the numbers is 37, which can be obtained by adding 32, 4, and 1, which is similar in structure to the bracket structure that SNS5 used. This is because SNS5 advanced one player per pool to Division 1 and powers of two to the other divisions like mentioned earlier. Unfortunately, the number that comes after 1 and 4 on Pascal's triangle though is not 32, it's 6. And that gives us my example from earlier. However, the 1, 8, and 28 row looks somewhat promising, since 28 is at least close to 32. The problem here is that when you're advancing 37 people, you'd be running Swiss groups of 256 people in 8 sets per player. This is problematic for obvious reasons, and maybe that could technically be done, but good luck to that pool captain. You'd probably need multiple pool captains per group, all in a place where they can update the bracket online to even have a chance. But here's how it would at least look. So, you know, eight Swiss groups of 256 players, that's a lot. 2048 total entrance, which is a reasonable super major number. Top 37 per group advance. So you have your, uh, your Pascal numbers here multiplied by eight different groups, and this is how you get your advancements. You have 296 advancing. So back down to division three, you have 16 groups of 14. And this is the one thing that looks weird here. But I think 14 is at least close enough to 16 that you can maybe justify it. So you have 224 players starting in here. 224 in the winner's bracket. This is your 10th to 37th place. So you have 28 people in group coming here. And then the top four from each group are going to advance to Division 2. So from this point on, you have a clean bracket from this point on. And this is at least pretty good. And this group of 14 is at least somewhat resembling a 16 person bracket. So once you get to division two, I think you're probably gonna wanna actually have two groups of 64, so you can have four people advancing from the from the end because it would be kind of weird to have only two people advancing. So ignore that, let's do two groups of 64. And then when you get that, you'll get a top 16 at the end. It's only a top 16, but at the very least, you have what, for the most part, is pretty clean brackets aside from just 14 person brackets in division three. Honestly, I don't think that 14-person brackets are bad. They're close enough to 16 that it can be an excuse. Now, I'm not sure if everybody agrees with me there, but that's my opinion. If anyone wants to look for other ways to make this work as well, I would look into advancing 16 out of 32 players or using the 1, 5, and 10 row. This way you could set up completely even premiere and consolation brackets if you wish. I imagine some of the brackets may look a little bit funky because like my 11 advancing example, there isn't a way to make the advancement numbers pretty because the 11 example is a combination of 1, 4, and 6, we ran into some 12 person groups. I imagine 22 advancing could maybe work as well, which is the 1, 6, 15 row, but it would probably have to be done with 24 and 48 person brackets instead of 16, 32, and 64 if I had to guess. And I'll leave the rest of this to any viewer who wants to try to think of working methods themselves. A final comment on the SNS format. Technically, you don't even have to have a Division 3 as well. Maybe the most successful route that this format has would be in the form of large monthly tournaments with only two divisions. Top five advance from 16 person groups and this would guarantee four matches for every player, which may be an interesting option for tournaments with heftier buy-ins than the average local. It should also work for 64, 128, and 256 person events, if I'm not mistaken. Finally, my last suggestion, which probably has the most versatility, is simply not finishing the Swiss phase because there is nothing that actually forces us to finish the Swiss phase if you're doing a progressions tournament. This way you can rig the numbers really in any way you want and potentially have it so you don't need groups of exactly two to the X. This way the Swiss phase doesn't even have to crown a winner. You may have multiple undefeated people remaining at the end of the Swiss phase, but the numbers have done enough to give progressions already. You could get away with everyone being in the same Swiss group as a pre-bracket phase this way as well, because nobody would be able to claim that they are the champion since there would be other undefeated players at the end of the Swiss phase. Maybe you have a 144 person Swiss pool for example, and call it after 3 rounds. 
You then have 18 undefeated players and 54 2 and 1 players. The top 72 get to play a premier bracket, and the bottom 72 maybe get to play consolation. And everybody gets at least 5 games this way. Anyways, I think this is the end of the Waterfall Swiss deep dive. I don't really know how to end this video, but I may do more tournament format discussions in the future. So, I have a few ideas, but my guess is that this will be the longest video in the series since this format was particularly complex to study. And I hope you enjoyed it regardless. So, this is how Smash and Splash failed before it was even going to begin. Uh, stay tuned and subscribe for more similar content in the future. And maybe, just maybe, by the time the next video rolls around like this, we'll have some extra surprises for the channel. But anyways, I guess we'll see you then. For now, have a good one everybody. Thanks for watching.